morning and call your attention to the Gospel of Mark chapter 13 to the closing verses of this chapter in the Gospel of Mark. You find here, brothers and sisters, that our Lord Jesus Christ was in Jerusalem for the last time. Earlier on, on his journey with his disciples to Jerusalem, he had predicted his own death in his final visit to Jerusalem. In Mark chapter 10, verses 33 to 34, you read the Lord telling his disciples, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and hurt him and spit on him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. And as he was leaving the temple where he had taught the people for the last time, we are told, brothers and sisters, that he made predictions about the destruction of the temple. For you read there in chapter 13 and verse 2. Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Brothers and sisters, you find our Lord giving the disciples the signs of his impending destruction and how the Lord called them to be conscious of the approaching signs and they were to listen to him and then he gave them instruction as to what they must do in order, in order to keep themselves safe, their loved ones safe as well. He pointed to the signs given by the prophet Daniel, how they were to look for the sign of the abomination of desolation. Something was going to happen soon in their time. It will be a desecration of the, in the temple of God that will result in the temple being destroyed. And so we find it in fulfilled in the year 70 AD when the Romans marched into Jerusalem, conquered Jerusalem and literally burnt down Jerusalem including the ancient temple of God there in that land. It was destroyed by the Romans. Yes, it's true, but God has already predicted that that will be the case because the Lord Jesus Christ had already died on the cross by then and the Lord has 30 years, 40 years earlier already made predictions and after his death the temple was of no more use. That is why at the very moment that the Lord Jesus said it is finished and died on the cross, the, the curtain in the temple was torn into two by God. And that was a sign, brothers and sisters, that the end would come and the temple was no longer uh, to be in existence because the Lord had already accomplished the, the purpose, the symbols of the temple in real life and in reality. Soon after, brothers and sisters, the Lord came to his disciples soon after the destruction of the temple, a, a period of great affliction would follow, and this period of great affliction will gain its momentum, and the degree and the seriousness of the persecution will increase and increase more and more with his passing day until the, the Lord Jesus Christ returns for his people. And we are told here very clearly, brothers and sisters, that the suffering that will come upon this world was a sign of God's judgment. This is what disobedience to God will heal in this world. Disobedience to God will create misery. Disobedience to God will bring about the judgment of God. And so you find the world as it was suffering from misery. And increasingly you find people dying for all sorts of misery and all sorts of reasons. And the world increasingly will become so difficult for people to live, especially for the Christian to live, that God, out of His mercy for His people on earth, will shorten this period of great affliction. Why? Because God loves His people and the Lord will be sent to return and He will come to end this period of great suffering and with His return He will bring the world to a close 
this disobedient world will be brought to a close. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as it is the days of our Lord Jesus Christ and His apostles, we find the world going through cycles. We find the world disputing with the gospel, rejecting the gospel, and going through cycles of violence. World War One, World War Two, and we find increasingly the sign of a World War Three about to happen around the world. Not only in terms of wars and rumors of wars that have brought about so much death and destruction in Europe and around the world. Your grandparents or your great grandparents went through a time of great suffering during the Second World War under the Japanese occupation. And we would look back and we, you would have studied in local history, brothers and sisters, of the great tremendous misery, how people were suffering from hunger and from being taken away in the lorry to Changi Beach and there they will be cut down and be killed simply because of the antagonism against, against the people, oh brothers and sisters, you can see the increasing signs of misery and a period of great suffering upon this world. That each generation we find that violence is even more and more cruel than the generations before. You look at the increasing natural disasters in this world. There was no such thing as global warming earlier on in the last 2,000 years. But increasingly the world is in this trouble. We call it birth pain. Like a woman about to give birth to a child, the woman would suffer and experience tremendous pain. And that's exactly a picture of what is happening around the world today. The earth, the world is manifesting distress and agony and misery, brothers and sisters. Increasing natural disasters. You look at the violence that is being promoted by Hollywood. In its movies and uh, shows, you see it happening literally in many of the American cities and in Europe and elsewhere around the world in the name of human rights and human freedom. You find nations, threatening nations. You find new diseases. You find the danger of economic troubles and collapse. You find social unrest, brothers and sisters, unless you are blind. You know that this is indeed a world that is troubled, a world that is increasingly manifesting all these sadness and suffering. Not only that, internally in our lives, in the personal lives of each human being, you see the rise in marital divorces, you find families facing all sorts of modern tension and families broken. Children are not talking to the parents. Parents abandoning their parental duties and run away and things and then brothers and sisters, disobedience, no love and respect for one another. We find, as I say, global warming, climate change. We find thousands and islands around the world being destroyed, covered with sea water, and no longer able to be inhabited by human beings or sea water level rising. The world is manifesting this, all these great distress and signs, just as our Lord Jesus Christ said, it started. It started with the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. It started with the destruction of the temple, and it will increase in speed and in degree of seriousness and intensify until the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Brothers and sisters, the world will indeed spin out of control and violence. We must expect all this. You must be ready to face such a hostile world, brothers and sisters. And you are indeed finding it so. Christians are increasingly faced with hostility. What a time, not so long ago. Christians were mired in this country alone. The founding fathers of this land, the pioneers of this country called Singapore, many of them, a great majority of them, were very fine Christians of high integrity. Even the businessmen, many of them, many of them who were the, the, the pioneering businessmen of our land, they were very great Christians who were known for their honesty and who were known for their Christian commitment. But no more, brothers and sisters. 
refined people taking on the name of Christianity, but they live so poorly and resulting in people mocking Christians, ridiculing Christians, attacking Christians, questioning Christians. The Christian influence in our law, in our society, is eroding its the law. We find Christians around the world, some of them being jailed, being hated, even in countries that used to be known as Christian countries just 100, 200 years ago. And so you find the church being burned, churches being burned, and Christians facing increasing hostility. Missionaries were welcomed in many of these countries uh, just 100 or 200 years ago, but today it is close to an impossible to get a missionary visa to most countries around the world because missionaries are increasingly seen as troublemakers rather than uh, good for the country and society. So you should not be surprised, my beloved brothers and sisters, for the Lord has already told you so. Look at what he says in chapter 13 and verse 23. He says that Christians should not, not be surprised by all these afflictions because he had told you all these things beforehand. And look further up in chapter 13 and verse 7, you read, Do not be troubled, for such things must happen. These things will increase in its intensity and frequency like earthquakes and a tsunami and all, because all these are signs that a Christian must look for before the Lord would come. The disciples could not understand many of the things the Lord Jesus Christ had told them, especially about his impending death and his resurrection three days later. They could not understand. And so here also they could not understand. What do you mean by this beautiful complex will be destroyed? Very soon, the appearance of the abomination of desolation and things like that. If you turn that earlier on to Mark chapter 9, you find that they were unable to comprehend all these things. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 10, regarding what Jesus said about his coming death and resurrection, we are really there in chapter 9 and verse 10. So they kept this word to themselves, questioning what the writing from the dead then, you see, they could not understand. Go down to verse 32. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. You see, that they could not understand anything. Well, we can understand today because we have a hindsight. We look back into history. Things had already happened. Jesus had already died. And we know what it meant by three days after his death. He were right again. Before that was exactly what happened. He rose back from the, he came back from the dead three days after his death. We knew all these things. But you must understand, these were all new things and future things. And at that point in time, the disciples could not understand. That is why. In regards to the destruction of the temple and the increasing uh, period of tribulation, we are told that look there in chapter 13, verse 3 to verse 4, that they could not understand what Jesus meant when he predicted the destruction of the temple. So they sent Peter, James, John, and Andrew to ask him privately, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign? when all these things will be fulfilled. And it is very natural, brothers and sisters, you heard about the destruction of something so cute and so majestic, and the Lord Jesus tells you, so you want to know when, and you will know how, how these things will be, and what are the signs, can you please give us the approaching sign, so that we can be ready to face after having told them, as we heard last week, of the signs and what they must do, they are to escape very quickly when they see the approaching sign of the destruction of the temple and uh, the increasing period of suffering. The Lord Jesus Christ then gave them two, two pictures to heighten the lesson for them. Look at what they are told there. The first picture is found in verse 28 to verse 29. Mark 13, 28 to 29, you find the picture, the lesson from the fig tree. We learn that. Now learn this parable, or learn this illustration. 
learn this visual example from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put from leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near, even as the Lord. And so the Lord used the picture of the fig tree. They were familiar with the fig tree. They were mainly an agricultural society. And many of them would plant fig tree for the consumption of the fig. You see, nobody planted a fig tree to be a shade because fig trees were not known to be very shady trees. They were made more, they were more interested in the quality of the figs that would appear when summer draws near. And the Lord called them attention to this. When you see these, they'll be fig. That when you see, you know that summer is coming, and soon you'll be able to eat the fig fruit, the fig from the tree. So similarly, the Lord says, when you see this sign that I told you, as I have given you, and as I have predicted to come, we will be ready. My coming is near. The destruction of the temple will also be near. You find the Lord Jesus Christ giving another picture if you turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16 Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 16 verse 2 to verse 3 and there in Matthew 16 verse 2 and verse 3 you find the Lord Jesus Christ calling the attention to something that they were familiar with also about the weather look there, Matthew uh, chapter 16 verse 2 to verse 3 he answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is grey, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is grey and threatening. Hypocrites! You don't know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. You see here, brothers and sisters, what the intention of our Lord was is to call the repeater people to look at all the natural signs that God has already placed around us. In Singapore, when you look to the sky and you see there is no sunshine, it is dark and cloud baby. You know, oh, a heavy rain is about to fall on our land and then we flood in Bukit Nima or those low-lying areas in Singapore. But when you look up to the sky, the sun is just burning you. It is bright and the sky is just so clear. Ooh, you know that the day is going to be a very hot day. Well, the Lord Jesus says you are so good from your experience. You can see whether it is going to rain or is it going to be a hot day. It is the same. When you look at people suffering, you see the level of natural disaster, you see religious persecution against the Christians, the rejection of the gospel. Well, brothers and sisters, the Lord tells you, His return is near, and you are to be ready for Him. So when you see a fig tree showing sign of growth, you know that summer is near, and this is the lesson, the spiritual lesson for you. That the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is near when you see the signs of the destruction of the temples and the signs of the great affliction that will indeed uh, be found around the world. Then the Lord Jesus said things in regards to the destruction of the temples. Look at what he said. He said that this generation will see the temple destruction. Isn't that what he tells you here? That this generation, verse 30, assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. The suffering they will experience, the destruction they will see, that they will have to make plans to quickly escape as the Lord told them. And exactly 40 years after what the Lord Jesus Christ said, it really happened in the year 70 AD. And many of the Christians were still alive. Those who heard our Lord speaking would still be alive when all these things happened. And the Lord Jesus Christ called them to trust in His Word. Look at what Yahoo said in verse 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will by no means pass away. And exactly so, God 
never fail life. You are a lion, you are a human, you are a sinner, you are an unfaithful man. Many people say, to them to what part? to a woman, and a woman to a man, and then in between they commit adultery, they mess up their lives, and they divorce. The Lord never made a commitment that He is not willing to keep. The Lord tells us there that His word is reliable, He tells you destruction of the temple will come soon, and He did. And when that happens, you must also trust Him, because He says that these things will happen, and then I will come for you, I will rescue for you. I will rescue you because I keep you. Hope God, brothers and sisters, because God who cannot lie, He has promised before time began, as you are told them in Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. Tell me, brothers and sisters and children, do you believe when you see all these things happening around you? Are you prepared? Are you consoled? Are you comforted that the Lord Jesus Christ will soon come back? The second lesson, the second picture that you learn given by our Lord is found in verse 33 to 30, verse 34. In Mark 13, verses 33 to 34, you read, Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each servant his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. You are told here of the picture of a doorkeeper especially. All the other servants, but particularly the doorkeeper. Then what do you think would be the duty, the main duty, the most important duty of a doorkeeper? For the doorkeeper is meant to keep the door safe, to make sure that nobody, no thief, no robber will enter the, 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 the compound to the door. His duty was to guard the door, to make sure that only those that he would envy would be able to come in, especially he must guard the door. Well, for when the owner, would his, his lord, his master would have returned, well, he better open the door to welcome the owner, the master back to his house. And so that was the duty of the all people. And the Lord Jesus called you to do the same. Keep away. That's the meaning of the call to watch. To watch means to keep away, to be attentive. Now, all Singaporeans, men, would know what is God duty in the end of days, whether it be in the police, whether it be in the civil defense or even the army, brothers and sisters, you would have been rotated to perform God duty. And what is the purpose of a God duty? Well, you are supposed to guard the chair, the compound, while other people, most other people will be sleeping, resting for the night. You want to keep everything safe for them, make sure no intruders, no enemies are climbing over the fence and coming in to kill everybody else or to steal things, brothers and sisters. And that was the duty to keep the place safe, to be ready to open the gate for the lawful entry of people, but to keep away the unlawful people from coming in. You must be ready. You cannot be. There were people that come in and there's no guard, or at least the guards are all sleeping, and when no matter how people shout and try to wake the guard, the guard just say, I will go away, I'm sleeping, don't disturb me. That will be a failure in your duty as a guard. So the Lord calls you to this duty of a Christian. You know the Lord says it's coming soon. Well, you don't know when, but you know it's coming soon. And what should be your duty, brothers and sisters, to our Lord, to show your obedience to your Lord? Well, He tells you here, if you look there in verse 35, Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning. Let coming suddenly be find you sleeping. That's definitely not what you want to happen when the Lord returns. And He finds you doing things that seem full wicked and in total disobedience and rebellion against Him. Can you just imagine how shameful you will be? But rather be ready. 
that when the Lord comes, He finds you doing what is lawful and doing what He has committed to you to do. Now, some people in the time of the Protestant Reformation, they read passages like that, and you know what they did? They threw away everything, and they cut themselves from any jewelries and accessories, and they would wear just one piece of white shirt or white gown, and they would go up to the mountain, and there they spend their time fasting and in prayer, and they say that when the Lord comes, the Lord will see them ready for Him. Martin Luther says those people will be shamed because Jesus never asked them to be ready that day. Martin Luther was asked what would he be doing when Jesus returned. And Martin Luther replied to the person who asked him, I will be very busy doing what he has asked me to do. I will be visiting the sick, I will be preaching, I will be cooking, I will be taking care of my children and my wife, and I will be about my master's business that he gave me in this world in this time. Rather than those silly people who abandon their duties and think that they are more spiritual than others when they were there, just in that white cloth, white gown, waiting for the return of the Lord. So it is with you. If you are a father or mother, be at your duty. If you are a silver servant or whatever work you are doing, be at your duty. And make sure you are serving the master and give all your best to your master. Doing your work for your master's sake, for his glory. Because you know he's soon coming back. And you are always watching when you hear about persecution, when you hear about natural disasters, when you hear about new disease, when you hear about the increase in COVID infection. Well, your sight is always wondering when you see coming. Is it the final sign? Because they say when things are getting too difficult and when things are getting too dangerous for its people, he will come. And we look increasingly around the world, the coming of our Lord in this is going to be very soon and we ought to be ready. That's a spiritual reference. That you must never, never forget. Let me ask you, are you watching, are you teaching your children to be watching rather than giving them what the world is calling their attention for, giving them all the entertainment and all that the world is so lovely? Well, brothers and sisters, remind them that this is a suffering world, a world that is suffering from birth pain. And the world is, as the Lord is striving, will continually and increasingly face sorrows. Christ calls you to look for His coming. He says that His coming will be in the clouds with great power and glory, verse 26. Is it something that you long for? Is it something that you really want to see? Is it something that you dream about? Is it something that you talk about? Is it something that you ever wonder about? Wow! What a glorious sight it will be when I cast my eyes upon the sight of this coming day when the clouds in the heavens in the sky split like the waters on the Red Sea, the two, and there in between you see the Lord coming with His holy angels in His horses and His majesty, and the Lord calls your name. How wonderful the sound will be, isn't it? When He say, Arise, come and meet me and join me, and you find that everything in this world is no longer of interest to you. You are all willing to let go because your Lord is there. The one you have loved and suffered so much for, the relationship that you have been keeping with great expense and with great suffering, you want him. The world is nothing. You want him. He calls for you. The world can say, what about our music? What about our treasure? What about our wealth? What about everything you have invested in? And you will say, no, 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 it's of no interest. Because my interest is there. It is the one who is coming the King of Kings, the Lord of all Lords, and you are ever ready, you are ever keeping up, you are ever looking for that spiritual sight that will soon appear, whether in your lifetime or in the lifetime of your children. Oh, brothers and sisters, be ready, Jesus said. Watch, keep watch, be on your guard, be looking at the victory, we look 
king and the doorkeeper and all his holy soul because he saved it and he never tell lies. It has already happened in the year 70 AD. And so we know with the increasing troubles we find around the world, Jesus will soon come and you will be ready for him. Oh, let us pray, Lord. How grateful we are this morning to be reminded Jesus is coming very soon. This is indeed a world that is miserable, a world that is indeed in distress with the COVID pandemic, with the danger of a wrong move by superpowers. Oh gracious Lord, man, man woman to man, human to human relationship breaking down. Lord, we ask that you be merciful to us. Keep us, we pray. Come soon, Jesus, as you have promised. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly for your church. We commit ourselves to you, to your mercy, and we ask that you remember our loved ones. For we hear that they will also join us. They will be where we will be, and that we will be where you are, Lord Jesus. So remember us in your mercy and deal with us not according to our sins, but remember what you have done for us on the cross and Calvary. Oh, merciful Lord, accept us because you love us. For Christ, our Savior, sake. Amen.